Make It With Miss Mandy. Today we're going to be creating this 3D riverboat. And this is a really cool one with lots of tiny details and even a movable paddle wheel in the back, which is really fun. So I made this design a while back and I've gotten a lot of questions on how to make it, especially this paddle wheel. And so I'm excited to answer some questions today and also make myself a new riverboat because this one has seen a little bit of wear and tear over the year. So I'm ready to make a new one. So to get started, we're gonna need about 12 sheets of cardstock, um, a bone folder if you'd like, a lollipop stick, and then I also used a gold marker to make some of these littler embellishments around the side, um, a hot glue gun, a cutting machine, and then my free template that can be found over on designsbymissmandy.com. So also, one more thing to note before we get started, this design, like most of my 3D designs, does include score lines and um, they're very, very helpful in putting this design together, so I highly suggest using them if you have a cutting machine that is compatible with them. Um, so if you don't know how to set up those score lines, be sure to check out my previous video on how to set up score lines in Cricut Design Space, and then let's get going. All right, I have all of my riverboat pieces cut out and I'm ready to get going. Okay, but before we start assembling this, I am going to add a few of my hand-drawn embellishments on first. Sorry, there's a whole stack of these here. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> but I've got all of them, I promise. Okay, so the first time around, I added my little hand-drawn gold elements later, which is fine and totally works, but this time I am going to start by adding my gold embellishments um, just to make it a little bit easier on myself. And what, what I mean by that, is if you look at this riverboat here you can see there's some like little gold um, balls right here and then the scalloped part of this roof piece is also gold and I drew that in with a little um, gold sharpie pen and I'm going to start by doing that first All right, and with those done, we're ready to start assembling this bad boy. So you might think that um, you wanna get started from the base and work your way up, but actually we're gonna start from the top and work our way down on this piece, for the most part. So to start with, we're gonna do the top piece, which just requires um, this piece and this one, and then we're gonna connect it to one of these. So I'm gonna set this one aside for now and just focus on these three pieces. To start with, I'm just gonna take this piece and fold along all the score lines. All right, and with those folded, I am just going to start adding some dabs of hot glue and start attaching my tabs to the inside. With that done, next I'm going to take this piece, fold along the score lines, and then start attaching each side around this little box. As you're going around, keep in mind that this bottom portion is gonna line up with the base and that this scalloped portion is going to stick up over the edge just a little bit. All right, that piece is done. So now I'm going to widen the slits a little bit on this piece just to make it a little bit easier to slip this top piece in. Oh, and I should mention that this piece does differ from this one, even though they're almost exactly the same, the difference is going to be um, where the slits in the top are. So you can see these ones are all right here in the middle, and that's how you know it's going to be the top piece. And these ones are closer to the perimeter 
of the floor and so that's how you're going to know that this is going to be the um, section for the next level, the bottom level. Okay, then I'm just going to fold along the score lines. Okay, and now I'm just going to slip this piece in to the slots provided. And then once those are in, I'm going to glue the tabs down on the opposite side. With those pieces connected, we're ready to attach the top railings. And so we've got a bunch of little railing pieces here. Sorry, I'm like trying to get rid of this uh, cobweb now. Okay, so we have a bunch of these little railing pieces and these two super long ones are gonna go along the bottom deck. So we're not gonna worry about these ones right now. I'm just gonna set those aside. And these three pieces are the ones that we're going to be working with. So this short piece is going to go along the back edge and the little bottom tabs aren't like sliding into anything. They're just gonna be folded up and attach back here. These two railings are going to overlap a little bit in the front and then wrap around the sides, slip the tabs into the slots provided, and then these tabs are going to attach the back railing. And actually, I'm going to trim these down just a little bit so that they're not quite so noticeable find my scissors okay see so yeah, I'm just gonna cut these down a tiny bit so yeah so don't attach these two together just yet um, I'd suggest um, here hold on I'll show you one second okay we're ready so what we're gonna do first is slip these tabs in to make sure that we get these aligned first and foremost, glue them down, and then I'll do the same thing with the other one, and um, then you can overlap them and glue them together. All right, sorry, that was like poorly explained. Hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> And with that, our top deck is complete. I think the tough thing about this piece isn't just that there's a lot of little pieces, but also that they're so delicate and fragile. Yeah, I don't know. That's the part that makes it hard. Okay, but moving on, these pieces are slightly less fragile, so give your fingers a break. <laughs> You're going to grab these two dark pieces, and then all of these little, ooh, they're slipping, all of these little archways. Okay, so you can kind of line these up and figure out where they go. Okay, I apologize, I've got even gotten confused, and I'm the one that designed this thing. Okay, so these pieces um, that have uh, no archway in the middle are meant to curve around this edge, so this is going to be the back. And remember, this is going to be the front, and so this is where it curves around right here, is where this section is going to go. And there's a little tab right here, just to give it a little bit of leeway, so that when it overlaps, this creates an arch right in the front. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there's a hopefully a slightly better explanation for you. So let's start assembling this thing. Since I don't have to worry about any curves in the back, I am going to attach this piece first. But yeah, because these ones are gonna end up curving around, um, I'm going to fold and assemble this piece before I attach 
these sections. Just because when you're dealing with curves, um, when you have the cardstock layered on beforehand, uh, it can start puckering and kind of doing weird things. So anyway, as often as I can, I like to layer these kinds of pieces on first, but in this case, these ones are gonna go on second. Okay, now I'm just going to attach these sides. And that piece is done. Now we're just gonna repeat the process and do the same thing with the other one. All right, with both these pieces ready to go, we're ready to start um, assembling the rest of our decks. So we've got our top one here. And now we need to do the next one. Similar to before, I'm just gonna fold along these score lines. Then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, widen these slits. I'm gonna take one of these pieces, slip them in and attach them. Okay, with this piece put together, the next thing to do is attach these two together like this. So I just need to widen these slits. And I'm just gonna line these up and glue in the tabs. All right, this is really starting to come together. Next, we are going to start working on our base piece. We're gonna take these two pieces, this piece, these little guys, and this piece. Okay, so to start with, you're gonna take one of these, set the other one aside for a minute, and we're gonna take this. This is going to be the, um, the side piece, so this is gonna be the bottom. This is gonna wrap around the side, like this, and then this is gonna be the other side. So to get started, we're just gonna fold along these score lines. And then once I have those folded in, I'm just going to start attaching this. And you can see there's these long pieces that are gonna start over here. And then these short pieces that are going to be attached one or two at a time as you work your way around this curve.
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is attach just a couple of these guys to the ends. So one right here and one right here. And then this piece is going to make up the back section. And if you look closely, and it might not show up very well on the camera, but there are these little slits here and here. And that is where you're going to put in these last two little flaps, like that. So first I'm gonna fold along all these score lines, then attach these guys into the slits, and then I'm just going to start attaching, folding and attaching this all the way around this perimeter. And with that piece in place, we're ready to attach the top. All right, that section is done. And now we need to work on the rest of the base, which includes this white piece and then the rest of the railings. So to start with, I am going to fold these scalp pieces downward, and then I'm going to attach these tabs along the edge. Now it's time to attach the railings. And it's kind of hard to see, but there are some really teensy tiny score marks on these railing pieces. And that's how you're gonna determine where the back side is and where the front is. So, and also the back has these like little tiny tabs and they're just gonna go in these little slits. Well, not that way, this one's gonna be over here. <laughs> and then, wrap around the perimeter like this. Same with this side, and just like with the top piece, they're gonna overlap slightly in the front. All right, with the railing on top, we're ready to piece this whole thing together. So the next thing to do is going to be to connect these pieces. Um, actually, I lied. <laughs> this piece is going on next, and then this piece on top. And then once these are all glued on, and um, all of these have tabs to go in and places to put them in. Um, once those are all on, then you're going to just set this piece right on top of your base piece like this. And this will just, um, these will overhang on all sides just a little bit. Okay, so let's get going, starting here. All right, our river boat is just about done. The next thing to do is the paddle wheel. So I know that this 
proportion um, causes a lot of people some trouble, but I think uh, once you've seen it done, hopefully it will start to make some sense. So we're just gonna start off with a couple of these pieces and these. So all you need to do is take these, fold along the score lines, and then you're just going to attach these all around your paddle wheel. And I'm just lining these up so that um, the top portion right here is right, um, so it's not all the way directly on the edge, but it's just right here aligned with this um, top circle piece. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter, just whichever place you want to start aligning it to, just as long as you keep doing the same thing all the way around. Okay, hold on, let me get my hot glue ready. All right, so the other thing to keep in mind is that whatever direction you start gluing these pieces in, you wanna just keep going the same direction, just for continuity's sake. All right, easy as that. I'm just gonna take another piece now and repeat the process. And since I started going with the um, tabs going to the right, I'm just going to do that all the way around. All right, now that each of those flaps are attached, I'm going to just start gluing them to the same spot on another piece of the wheel. Okay. One down, a bunch more to go. <laughs> so that's the gist of it. You're just gonna kind of keep repeating that process over and over again, attaching the flaps and building upon it and just adding another wheel, attaching the flaps and then adding another wheel until you have all of them done. All right, I finally finished my paddle wheel and now I'm just going to insert it here and then push my sucker stick through. And I had to trim this down just a little bit. I do want it to overhang um, a little bit on each side so that I can still turn it once it's inserted, um, but I didn't want it to be quite as long as it was. And I just used my scissors to trim it down. Um, basically, I just kind of kept cutting at it until I could snap it off. Okay, so this is kind of a tricky process and just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to be pushing the sucker stick through these holes first and then through each one of the little holes in the middle of this wheel. And it's a tight fit on purpose so that it'll be able to um, hold to the sucker stick really well once it's in there. And so it'll take a little bit of time and maneuvering to get it through. Okay, after a lot of maneuvering, the lollipop stick is all the way through and my paddle wheel is functional. Look how cute that is. All right, so the next thing we're gonna work on for the river boat is our smokestacks. These aren't too hard to make. All you need are these two uh, square pieces these two little toppers, and then this banner that's gonna go in between the two. So to start with, we're gonna take these pieces and kind of curl them. You can also use like a, let's see if I can find a round pen. start from this end and kind of curl them this way there we 
go. And then I am just going to add some dots of glue to this tab. There we go. And then we're going to fold these tabs inward. These tabs are going to be the bottom of the smokestack and are going to be what we use to attach it to the top deck of the boat. Like that. Okay. And then once again, I'm just going to try to curl this around a little bit. And then I'm also going, going to take these top pieces and curl them outward to give them a little bit more dimension. It's going to make like a little crown on top of the smokestack like that. So I'm just gonna start where the seam is on the back and work my way around. All right, one smokestack is complete and I'll just repeat the process with the other one. With our two smokestacks done, the next thing we're going to do is add this little banner in between them. And these have these tiny little tabs right here and here that I'm just going to fold back, add a little bit of glue, and attach them like so. Now I'm just going to add some glue to the bottom of the smokestacks and attach it to the top deck of my riverboat. All right, we are almost finished. Riverboat's getting big, it's hard to fit it in the frame now. <laughs> okay, and the last thing to do is we're going to make some cute little bunting banners to go all around the outside and decorate this thing. Okay, so you're just gonna take these strips that have these little score lines on them and then these really tiny little rectangles and one of these and one of these is going to make a bunting together. So I'm just gonna fold this in a fan style, just back and forth, back and forth, and keep going along. Okay, then once all of my creases are in, then I can turn it into the fan shape. And to do this, I can add a little bit of glue, hot glue in the middle, and then some hot glue on the top here and here and attach this piece to hold the shape together. Okay, that bunting is finished. Now we're just gonna repeat the same process with the rest. All right, all the little buntings are finished and all that's left to do is to hang them up around the boat. Here it is, our lovely river boat is ready to set sail. Thanks for watching this video and for crafting along with me. I always love to see your finished results, so be sure to share them with me on Instagram, tagging at Designs by Miss M. And special thanks to my wonderful supporters on Patreon, and a warm welcome to my new subscribers, Benedetta, Lisa, April, and Nicole. Thank you so much for your support. If you enjoyed this paper craft, please consider becoming a supporter. Not only will you help keep the designs coming, but you can also have a chance to help pick new designs in the future and even get awesome exclusive content like postcards and enamel pins in the mail. Thanks again for watching and happy crafting! Oh, there she is. You're going to be in frame now. Oh yeah. Let me say, hello, my name is Opal. Hey, I have to take some pictures. <laughs>